Hi, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome back to our ongoing game development for Complete Beginners tutorial series. Today we're going to get down to the thing that probably the majority of people find the most interesting, that is drawing graphics. We're going to look at how you draw graphics using the Love Game Engine. And today we're going to be sticking to pretty much basic graphics, primitives, uh, things like lines and polygons. But we're going to cover a lot in this topic. We're going to be covering coordinates, uh, we're going to be covering colors, we're going to be covering obviously drawing. Um, and we're even going to get a little bit into animation, so a lot to be covered but it won't actually take too too long uh, so let's jump right in and here we've got a very bare bones love application now as we mentioned in the past uh, there are numerous uh, callback functions that are called at various points in the application's lifecycle uh, you've got load and quit that are called at the beginning and end respectively and those are called only once and then we have draw and update and draw and update are called over and over and over and over again and these are where you get the illusion of movement from so in draw it's your responsibility to draw whatever is going to be shown on the screen and it is going to be called pretty much as fast as your computer can call it. This is where words like frames per second come in. When something says it runs at 60 frames per second, that means the game's draw call or its equivalent was called 60 times in a second or what is that? 33 milli, 0.33 milliseconds a piece. Um, so that is essentially what we are doing today. Now in the draw function, uh, let's start with a very, very simple example. We're just going to draw a line to start things off. So we'll go love.graphics. The majority of the stuff is in the graphics uh, module. And let me just show you something very quickly. Uh, love 2D wiki. Here we go. Uh, for all of this, if we're only going to cover a very, very um, small subset of what is available. But if you look at the various modules, are all documented down the side of the love wiki. And you'll see we're dealing with the love.graphics module. And in it, so we're going to be touching a couple of these, like circle, actually not circle, but uh, line, polygon. But there's a number of other ones out here. We've been using print in the past. Um, there's arcs, etc. So just because we're only covering a small section doesn't mean this is all that, uh, that love is capable of doing. So I just want you to be aware of that right up front. And this is a great documentation source on how each particular call is actually um, used. So if you want more details, just head on over to the wiki. But we're going to deal mostly with the love.graphics module today. Um, so what we want to use first is a method in it. It's called line. Now line takes two parameters, um, a pair of coordinates for x and y. So x and y coordinates basically being locations in 2D space. Can't get into the math if you don't understand x and y coordinates. Uh, you're going to have to brush up on your algebra a little bit, but that's about as advanced as this math is getting. Uh, but you get a pair of x and y coordinates for the start of the line and x and y coordinates for the end of the line. And what I'm just going to do is simply draw from 0, 0 to 400 and 400. So what this, what this um, graphics call is basically saying is draw a line from the origin or 0 and 0 to 400 pixels in and 400 pixels down. And I'll just go ahead and show you the direct result of this code. There you go. So there's a couple of very important things to pick up here. The number one thing, the most important thing is that zero, zero is this top left corner of the window. And that changes from game engine to game engine. The different, different ones do it different ways. Sometimes it's done in the bottom left. Sometimes it's even done from the middle. Uh, so in the case of love, by default, it's done from the top left. So when you say zero, zero, it is this corner right here. Whereas if I say width and height, it'd be this corner right here. So this is zero, zero, and this is 400 pixels down and 400 pixels across. Now that's another important concept to know, is by default we're dealing with pixels. Pixels are obviously the little dots that make up your screen. Um, and we set the resolution of this window that you see right here um, in the conf.lua file. So right here, see width and height? means that our window is 640 pixels wide and 480 pixels high. Now pixels is a little arbitrary because I'm actually running on a high DPI screen, which one pixel is actually two, blah, blah, blah. So it doesn't actually correspond to direct real pixels on your the little dots that make up your monitor. But a lot of the times it does, and it's easiest to think of it that way. So if there's some trickery going on behind the scenes, it's either the operating system or your driver dealing with it. And you as a programmer generally don't need to be aware of it. We'll deal with high DPI screens later on down the road though. So there are some exceptions. Uh, but think, in, think of this as pixel units. So our top left corner is zero, zero. And thanks to the way we configured um, in the config.lua, 
our bottom right is 640 pixels across and 480 pixels down, which is why when we say 400 and 400, we end up here. Okay, so very important to understand where the origin is and how coordinates work. And that is basically how you draw a line in love. Quite simple. Now the next thing is, this. so this draw call is called over and over and over and over and over again. But what happens is after it's called and it's displayed to the user, the screen is cleared. And it happens automatically, love takes care of it for you. But you can set the clearing color if you wish. And let's just go ahead and do that now. Um, so we'll do that probably just once. So we're not going to be changing it. So I'm going to do that. If it's a change that's happening just once in your program, it makes a lot of sense to throw it in the, lo uh, the load call, which is called, again, at the beginning of your program, and is only called one time. So it's, again, love.graphics. Let me get that out of the way. And this time we're calling a function called set background color. Now, set background color takes a color value, which is actually four numbers. So this is going to take a little bit of explaining. But what we're going to do is clear the color as white. Okay? And why is this white? Well, that's where the explaining comes in. This value right here, this uh, parameter passed to most colors, is called an RBGA, or red, um, green, blue, alpha. And it's a value here in love. Sometimes it goes from 0 to 1, or it goes from uh, 1 to 256 in the case of love. And it's just a value basically at the very lowest value. Actually, I think it goes 0 to 255. I, I don't want to be exactly quoted either way on that one. Uh, but it is, yes, it's 0 to 255. Sorry. Um, that number represents the amount of that color. It's like if you use your monitor, you can jack up the red or the green or the blue channels individually. Well, this is essentially saying how much of red, how much of green, and how much of blue. So 0 would obviously be no um, red or no green or no blue, or 255 says 100%. And when you mix all the colors together, you get white. And when you have zero, zero, and zero, you get black. Now this final color is transparency or alpha. Uh, alpha represents the how see-through uh, this is going to be. And a value of 255 means 100% opaque, uh, whereas a value of uh, zero represents 100% transparent. So uh, what we've done here is said full color, so white, and fully opaque. Now we go ahead and run this, and there you see our screen is now filled in white. Now we do have a bit of a problem here though, because our line by default draws in white as well. So this comes down to another concept in, um, in love that's important to get, and this is state. There are certain values that you can set that stay until they're changed. And the color that we draw with is exactly one of those. And this is a very common thing. This comes from uh, OpenGL uses this concept of state. We basically say, okay, set the color, and now everything I draw after is going to use that color until we set it to a different color, for example. And there's a number of things that control this way, uh, but color is definitely one of the most obvious. So now what we need to do is go ahead and assign a different color so our line actually shows up. And what I will do this time is I will show you red. So there, red, green, and blue, remember, are the first three numbers. Uh, so um, red is the first one. Fully red would be 255. And then we want no green and no blue. And we'll keep it fully opaque, like so. And we go ahead and run this. And now you will see we have this nice, sharp red line. Now, I could go in here and I could set this to 128. And now you'll see it's lighter. That's because it's 50% transparent at this point. So that is uh, the basics of coordinates and the basics of color. Now let's jump in a little bit more. We're actually going to show you now um, how the coordinates work on the screen. So a lot of times you're going to want to know what the width or the height of a window is. So let's go back and we're going to draw another line this time. Um, and just to make it, just show you the state thing. I will now change the color again. And you'll see everything before we change the color again is drawn with the first color. So now we'll go ahead and make, um, let's say, 0 and 0 and 255. So this is fully blue now, like so. And love.graphics.line. And this time we are going to draw from top left. So, oh no. No, we're not. We're going to draw it straight through the middle. So we want to have it 
half of the, so zero means left-hand side of the window, so over here. And then what I want to do is draw it midpoint. So halfway through our screen, I want it to be right about here, but starting over here. So that is um, zero would be the X coordinate, which represents travel from left to right on your screen. And then the Y coordinate, which is top to bottom of your screen, we wanted to actually use love.graphics. And there's some very handy methods in here called get height. So I'm gonna call that guy and use half of it. So this will give us the midpoint of the screen. So that is where, ooh, what did you just do? Ah. Um, that is where our line is gonna start from. So now what we need to do is draw it to something. So in this case, we obviously started at the left-hand side of the screen or zero. So now we wanna start or end the line at the right-hand side of the screen, which is love.graphics.getWidth. And then we also are still at the middle of the screen, so we want to do the height as half of the height, like so. And IntelliSense, you did a, uh, there we go. All right, that's a little bit more legible. And now let's go ahead and run that. And I made an error. All right, that looks like a typo. Yeah, it was a typo. All right, let's try that all over again. I am not doing well with my typing. As you can see there, case sensitive is very important. So I did a capital G and I shouldn't have. There we go. So now you see we have this drawn right in the middle of the screen. Now it doesn't look like the middle of the window and it's not because these pixels at the top that represent your title bar are not included in that calculation. So just be aware of that. Generally you wanna do it relative to the drawing surface which starts right here, that's zero, zero, not that. Uh, so. The, the coordinates start at the beginning of the drawing surface. But here you can see, using get width and get height, we can easily position things relative within the window itself. Um, now I'm gonna finally show a slightly more complicated uh, drawing method, and this is a polygon. A polygon is simply a, um, a group of um, vertices or points that all work together to define a shape. And what we're doing right now is a filled polygon, which means it's gonna be filled with a solid color, uh, which in turn means it's gotta be convex or closed. Um, and then we're just gonna define, it's fairly simple to define. Um, it's another, here, let's change the color one more time. Love.graphics.setColor. So we'll go with green this time. All right, so you saw how each set color call lasted until another set color call took its place. And then when love.draw is done and displayed to the end user, then this color is used to clear everything. Okay, so we just changed the color one more time. We didn't have to coincidentally. I could have just done another draw call and it would just use the most recently set color. So I'm just setting the colors to show you and to, to easily mark the, the differing points. So now what we're gonna do is love.graphics.polygon. And this creates a new polygon. Poly literally means many. Uh, I believe gon actually means sides. So it's, it's a fairly self-explanatory uh, word. So we wanna pass in the parameter fill to say that we fill it. Otherwise it will just be a line shape on the outside. And we pass in, and this one's gonna look a little bit confusing, but remember tables. You can define a table using these squiggly brackets. Well, this is just a table of pairs. So we're gonna pass in a bunch of points that represent each line on the polygon. So our polygon is gonna start at zero and then 100. And then 200 and 100. All right, so that's your first uh, first point is at 0, 100, so top left corner, uh, down 100 pixels. So here-ish, oh, no, here-ish. And then we're gonna go move over to the right by 200 and still down 100. And then we're gonna repeat it to down here and then over to here. So those coordinates in turn are uh, 200 again but this time down another 200. So we're still first, so picture me drawing with my mouse a square. First one, second one, third one, which we just defined. And then finally we gotta go back to this one, which then will reconnect back to this first point right here. And then this last guy is simply um, zero and 300, I think. 
probably doing my math all wrong here, but let's just assume I did that right. Let's go ahead and run it. And there you go. So we got this nice, ugly green square being drawn. And you notice our lack of transparency means we're obscuring those underlying lines. So if I come back here and instead make this guy say 42, so quite transparent, we can now see the other lines through. So you kind of need to layer things on top to really appreciate what opacity does or alpha and the RGBA or red, green, blue alpha colors does. Uh, so there you can see the effect pretty profoundly when we set it quite low. Uh, so anyways, we now have a shape. Now let's finally look at just doing a really crude animation. And we're just gonna animate on the x-axis. We're just gonna cause this guy to draw until it gets to the end of the screen, and then we'll come back to the beginning of the screen. And we'll do that again forever and ever and ever. In order to do this, we need to have a variable to track the position. And for the first time, you're gonna see me not use a local. Instead, I'm just gonna go ahead and call this current x equals uh, zero. So we're gonna start off very left-hand side, and what we're gonna do is just the x value. So this is x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y. So for the x one, we just wanna go current x plus, so y, and then current x plus. So this is just gonna increment the, here, let's go down a line, current x plus, the x values in our drawing. So now instead of just drawing at a certain position, it's gonna draw at the certain position plus this value to x. And now we're gonna show you a bit of how the love update comes in handy. In love.update, all we're gonna do is add our simple logic in here to check to see if current x goes off the screen, otherwise increment it. So simple if, so if current x is less than love.graphics.getWidth, then, current x equals current x plus one. So really all we're saying here is as long as we're less than the width of the screen, keep adding to it. So every frame add a bit more to it. Um, all right, come on, there we go. Else current x equals zero. The otherwise condition here that we just dealt with is so if this isn't true. So if we are not less than the width, that means we're going off the screen on the right hand side. And in the event that that happens, we instead set x back to zero, which will cause our square to go back to this side. And we'll go ahead and run that now. And there you go. So this is very simple animation. And then as it goes off the screen, poof, comes back to the other side. So that is sort of the extent. That's how uh, update work updates used to update the logic of your world. And then draw is to draw what needs to be drawn on screen that frame. So this is how those two can work together to create an animation. Now there's one last topic I'm gonna cover here very quickly um, that what you see here, this guy is drawing, I, I, I imagine it's running at 60 frames per second because it's working with a fixed loop. But what happens if my computer wasn't capable of keeping up with that? Um, and that is, is definitely possible. So that's the downside to the way that I've done things here, because this update is going to be called as often as it can, or at 60 frames per second, depends on how you're, you've set up love. But if you're not capable of maintaining 60 frames per second, then this is gonna run at different speeds on lower computers. And you don't want different animation at different on different computers. So instead what we're gonna do is use per second type values. So I wanna go ahead, one second here, and what we want to do is instead of moving by one pixel every time this loop is sent in, we want to move by a fixed amount. That is, I want to move at, say, a rate of 100 pixels per second. So change this guy out to go 100, and that's not going to do anything. That's just going to move 100 pixels every time update is called, in which if we watch that, it's just going to go, that's obviously not what we want to do. So now we need to normalize this. We need to have this value consistent across every machine. And the nice thing is we have something nearby that makes this really easy, and that's DT. And DT is the amount of time as a fraction of a second that this frame has since the last frame. So you take that value, basically it's telling you 
the last frame took this month of a second to update. So now we can just take whatever unit we want to go by and multiply it by dt. dt is shorthand for delta or the amount of, you know, the difference. And that will take the amount of time. This will normalize it so we move by 100 pixels per second ish. Now, if your speed is varying a whole lot per frame, this logic falls apart. But at the same time, if your speed is going by more than um, a whole lot per frame, you've got a bigger problem. Your other possible issue with this is if it's taking you more than one second um, per frame to draw, in that case, you also have a bigger problem somewhere else. Uh, so as long as it's taking you less than one second between uh, calls to update, this value can just simply be multiplied by any per second unit to give you how much of uh, or what fraction of a second we need to update by this frame so that when one second has elapsed, it will total the value you're working with. So basically, this times this will give us what fraction of 100 pixels per second, for example, um, this current slice of time represents. So now we go ahead and use that value and we can see we are now normalized. And the nice thing about this code is, regardless to what your computer is running on, what speed it's using, if you're on a mobile device, etc., it will run consistently. So this is something you wanna get in your head very early, very often. Um, that's all we're gonna cover today. Uh, next up, we're gonna get into sprites, uh, which I will explain what they are if you do not have an, any idea, um, which basically is when we're gonna get into dealing with pre-generated uh, drawn graphics. So um, this was a good baseline of stuff you need to know. And you could obviously create a game using just primitives if you really wish to. I uh, hope that all made sense. If I lost you anywhere, please let me know in the comments down below and I will go into further explanation or I will cover in a future tutorial. Uh, that's it for now. Thank you very much.